welcome. This is going to be an eating video. If you want to jump straight to the eating part, just click on the timestamp in the description and that'll jump straight to the part where I start eating. But if you'd like to hear um, my motivation and the story towards this video, stay listening. So this video is dedicated to all of the people in Korea that watch ASMR. Not so long ago, I was uh, traveling at an airport and <coughs> and I met a lady <coughs> and here I was just, uh, you know, just wasting time uh, in the airport with my son and a lady come over and approached me and she says, are you Dimitri? And I'm going, yes. And she said, I'm from Korea and I love watching your videos. In Korea, you have quite a large following. And this was really uh, surprising for me because at that point in time, I didn't really realize um, how popular ASMR content was in Korea. So I noticed a few um, people that live there creating the content and I enjoy listening to it. I, uh, I do very much enjoy listening to certain accents. Um, the Korean accent is definitely one of the accents I like, but it's difficult for me to try and find that natural spoken voice that I really, really like from uh, people from Korea. And, and so... I've been, you know, thinking about it for a long time and I wanted to dedicate this video to all of the people from Korea. So here I'm going to eat some Korean food. I have dumplings, which are my favorite. I have some kimchi, which I've eaten lots of before. I have some seasoned squid. So they're the three main ones. I have some coffee over here. And I have my, of course, I've got my dipping sauce for my dumplings. I've got some Korean wafer biscuits. And some seasoned seaweed over here. Let us begin. I like my dumplings to be a little bit crispy. These dumplings are quite good. best part about dumplings is the dipping sauce, that's what I think. These are really good dumplings. These, um, when I went to the local Korean shop, I kind of looked at a few different foods and 
these dumplings said that they were Korea's, num Korea's number one dumplings. So I'll check the brand of them and I'll put them into the description so you can um, check them out. But kimchi, I quite like. This one, I know I kind of like that pretty much, but you want to know what I really love? Korean barbecue. In Australia, we don't really have much food culture. You know, we have barbecue, and that's pretty much our culture. Um, you know, it's our cuisine barbecue. So, barbecue, uh, Korean barbecue, just... Sorry about that. Korean barbecue is something that when I first went there, I thought, what? I have to cook the food when I come to a restaurant? And I didn't quite understand that that was Korean barbecue. And so at first I was a little bit confused, would probably be a good word to use. And... I proceeded to, you know, be calm and not get um, disappointed at any point, you know, because there's no point getting disappointed. And so I went with it. And um, for the first time, I think a lady came over and <clears throat> she helped to actually cook it a little bit for me. And then I kind of got the hang of what I'm supposed to do. I'm thinking... Okay, so... I need to cook the food. So I started to cook the food. And it wasn't too bad of an experience until I started eating the food that I just cooked. And I was just like, wow, this tastes great. This is better than an Australian barbecue by like a million times. And so, the next time I was like, let's go get Korean barbecue. And, you know, being the typical Australian male, if there's such a thing, you know, I wanted to cook on the barbecue. And so, there I went, cooking and enjoying it. Um, and, and it kind of helped to reinforce that. It was an enjoyable experience to go to a Korean barbecue restaurant to cook your own food um, just the way that you like it. And the flavors are awesome. And so, yeah, one of my favorite places to go, Korean barbecue. Let us continue. Absolute favourite. I love dumplings, especially pan fried ones.
Wow. Those dumplings. Awesome. Now, I'm a little bit worried about this part. Spicy. Korean food. food. <clears throat> Cabbage fermented in chilies. More chilies. More chilies. And add a little bit of chili oil on top, and that's kimchi. Now, normally, I like to start with a little bit. But let's start with a little bit more than a little bit. been quite a while since I've eaten some chili food and it has a little bit of bite to it but there's something odd about chili sensation in your mouth you just want to eat more Hmm, squid's not bad. Kind of a little bit sweet. So, <clears throat> while um, I'm letting my mouth cool down, let me tell you a little bit of story about one of the most spicy food experiences of my life. I was traveling through Thailand uh, a number of years ago, and I was waiting to go to the King's Palace in Bangkok, and it was a bit early and the palace wasn't open and so i was just walking around the one of the entrances and i saw this massive dish like i mean big dish just like a round metal cast iron 
Not a dish, but like a bowl, just cut, you know, just a big bowl. And on the street they were cooking some green Thai, Thai green curry chicken. And I've tried it before here on the Gold Coast and, um, you know, it's, it's very, very tasty. And I thought, when in Thailand, do as the locals do. Now, this comes on to another story that I don't know whether it was before or after that day. I think I'd have to go through and check camera logs to, to really find out. But anyway, here I am in Thailand waiting for the King's Palace to open so I can have a bit of a look around uh, by myself. And I see this awesome looking green Thai curry and I thought I gotta try some authentic Thai food street Thai food and there's no tourists there only locals and this is a key piece of information that you need to know or that you can take advantage of is that eat where the locals are eating that's the philosophy I had at around that same time which I might continue this story at the end of the video. So I'm sitting there, I get a dish of food, costs like a dollar or two dollars Australian, so it's like, you know, it's like a couple of bucks. And, you know, I get some rice and some green Thai curry and I sit down on some plastic buckets on a plastic table around other locals. And, you know, they're all grinning at me and then I start eating it. And oh my goodness, it was the hottest, chili curry I have ever and I mean ever eaten this food was only for locals this was not for tourists anyway so I, I started small I knew that it was going to be spicy so I started small I like it. I was like, oh. it was spicy and so you know a little bit more I'm trying to get my mouth accustomed to the uh, burning sensation of chili and at that point in time I'd been acclimatizing myself to eating more chili um, and so each mouthful got a little bit more and a little bit more and even though it was the spiciest food I've ever eaten it tasted so good I couldn't help myself. There was no way I was going to put it down. It was the best green Thai curry I'd ever eaten. But as I'm starting to eat it, I just got tears running down my eyes. I got my nose is starting to run. But it was so good. I had to keep eating and eating and I ate it all. And the locals, they were just smiling at me the whole time. Uh, watching me eat it but I was so proud of myself for eating something so spicy and it's you know it stayed in my memory as like a one of the the keystone events of me staying in Thailand and that's another video I'd like to do um, is just a little travel I went through Thailand and Cambodia and it was uh, nice just sort of um, going by myself I had a bit of time to, to travel the area. I had some um, unique experiences. Um, I was lucky enough to not get injured because a lot of tourists do things in Thailand that do not make sense, uh, that does not compute. But anyway, um, so the other little story about that day was when I was in Bangkok, Actually, it would have been just after this. Just after that day, not long after, I went to a, a Western-run vegetarian cafe and I got a tofu burger. Biggest mistake of visiting Thailand was eating a tofu burger that made me so sick, so sick, that it was just, a, yeah, it was food poisoning. It took me days to, to recover uh, for that. Um, but yeah, that, that was my worst food poisoning, um, 
experience. So after that, what I learned was you look where the locals are eating and you eat where the locals are eating. Go to the side of the street where the locals are eating, go eat with them. You know, you got to try and build up a little bit, but um, that was the philosophy I did for the rest of the trip, which was a few weeks, and I uh, didn't have any problems at all. Um, I was careful with the water. That was something I was cautious with. But with the food, I ate where the locals ate. And when I went to Cambodia, I followed the same uh, principle. If I was out, I'd look where all the locals were eating, and I'd just go eat wherever they were. And uh, I successfully navigated not getting food poisoned while I went through Thailand and Cambodia by following that um, theory. You know, it doesn't mean it's going to work every time. <clears throat> okay, let's get back to eating some spicy food. My mouth has cooled down enough to eat some more. It's, this isn't really spicy, but when you haven't eaten spicy food for a little while, it's a little bit spicy. Not too bad. Now we get to a little bit of dessert. These are some European waffle biscuits. Enjoy a deep and rich butter taste.
Jeez. Hmm. <clears throat> Definitely a good coffee taste. Oh man, Western culture could learn something about making a coffee drink like that. That's really good. I like that. So this here is some seasoned seaweed. Definitely not the most graceful thing to eat. Okay, thank you for watching my video, if you're still here. <clears throat> Let me know. If you'd like more videos like this, please comment, subscribe, and share, and like this video. Um, that way, more people can see it. Thank you for watching.